Yeah. yeah. Well, thanks, Cody, for looking into that. Hey, Jess, welcome. Good evening. Hi. Glad you could Hi. join. How are you? I'm doing well. How's everyone doing? Sorry, I'm late. You're fine. We know that you work late sometimes, so we're okay to wait a few minutes. Well, guys, I Thanks sent for waiting. I book. This book says The Adventures of English, a biography of a language. This book I have um, bought for each of you as a gift from me. It's not a textbook for this class. Um, it is a, a book that I'd like you to have on your coffee table or on your shelf one day when you are on vacation or you have time to read it, um, you can go and enjoy this book. Now, what this book is, it's a collection of work that goes back to the beginning of time that, that we are aware of um, and how the English language progressed. Um, I am going to, if it's okay, just mute everyone for just a moment, just because I'm getting like a lot of feedback. So if you need to just chat, you can just unmute yourself. Um, so what's really cool about this book is it takes us back to the beginning of time. You know, English is such an amazing language. It's evolved so much. We've talked about that, right? And um, this book takes you through the journey of this language and the power that this language has just because of where it's come from and how, it's, how it came to be. And um, all the people, all the religions, um, all the nations that were involved in English being what it is today. It's a very fascinating story. So if you love some history, you would love this book, but otherwise, like I said, it's not a textbook for this class. It's a gift for me to you, and I've put them in the mail today, so you should receive it sometime this week. I'm hoping by Friday. If not Friday, then on Monday. So enjoy, and um, from me to you guys. Um, and then this week, we are going to be talking about sources um, and your, the credibility of sources, and why do we do referencing and citation at this level and um, in college? And um, why is it so important? Why do we have to do it? Because it's kind of like a pain, I think, at times. Where, you know, it's just an extra added task to uh, do in your writing. But there is a very, very valid reason for it. So I'm going to bring up a little poll again as an in-class activity. Um, let's see this one. I'm going to launch the poll. Okay, can you guys see that? All right. So I would like you to... Um, it says, what do you struggle with the most when doing research? Is it adding citations and referencing? So choose as many of those that you feel you struggle with when it comes to referencing and citation and citing your work. So I'll give you a few minutes to just answer those. And then we'll have a look at those answers. Okay, two people have answered. All right, three people have answered. I'm just waiting for the last person to answer some of those. All right, looks like everyone has answered a few. Okay, so I'm going to share the results with you. All righty. Okay, can you guys see the results? Okay, so, and like I said, guys, at any moment, if you need to talk, just unmute your microphone. Um, I'm just muting everyone just because there was a lot of feedback on my end, um, and I, I, I was afraid you wouldn't be able to hear me properly. So, what do we struggle with the most? We don't know how to paraphrase. Uh, about 25% of us said we don't know how to paraphrase. Some said it's difficult to summarize, okay? Um, everyone's okay with quoting. Everyone knows where to start. Don't know where to insert citations properly. A lot of us said, chose that one, okay, and 25%, we'll look at that. Uh, don't know how to create reference pages. Okay, we're gonna do, I'm gonna show you some of that this, this evening, hopefully. It's gonna help sort that out. Um, I struggle to find enough to write, in other words, enough information, okay? And I struggle to write an essay. So a lot of us do. We struggle with various aspects. Someone said they lose their train of thought often. Well, don't worry. You're not alone there. I am exactly the same way. <laughs> um, so paraphrasing, 
is really uh, just stating what the author has said, but in your own words. And I, I'm, you're going to hear me often talk about lists, make a list of words, make a list of words, make a list of words. So to paraphrase, if you're struggling to paraphrase, the easiest way you can do that is take, just look at what the author has written, take the main words or the key points out of what they have said, write that down, and then make your own sentences with that. And summarizing is like that as well. Take the key points, just write them down on a list, uh, the key words or the key phrases or the key points. And then what you do is for each of those, make, put it into your own sentence and it'll be in your own words. Um, so that's really how you do paraphrasing and summarizing, a very simple way to do it, okay? Um, creating reference pages, I'm gonna show you, and how to insert citations properly, I'm gonna show you that. A very easy way to do that in Word. Um, finding enough to write means you haven't read enough on the subject. In other words, you haven't read enough research and different types of research to kind of fill your brain with enough information. So when you're actually writing the paper, you can kind of just spew out lots of thoughts and information because you've got lots of ideas in your head. Struggling to write an essay? This is what this class is about. We're taking you through the whole process of essay writing. And um, hopefully by the time we're done, it'll be, um, it'll be a lot easier for you. So losing your train of thought often? Well, I drink lots of coffee to keep me on track. <laughs> coffee helps. Uh, but I got that covers. <laughs> Say that again? I got that covers. <laughs> okay, good. All I've been right. All day. Me too, girl. I like top it up, keep it up all day, going all day so I can stay focused. <laughs> anyway, okay. So that was the poll. Um, gosh, I had a question for you and now I have lost it. Oh, oh, I know what the question is. Okay. Who can tell me, um, when it comes to referencing, why do we reference and cite um, work in college? What is the reason? There's got, we have to have a solid reason or we shouldn't be doing it, right? So who can tell me? What do you think the reason is? To give the credit um, to the person whose idea it was. Okay, yeah. that's very important, yes. To give credit to people whose idea it was. Okay. Why do we need other people's ideas in our writing? Because uh, they did most, they did some of the research for us. So we have to give them the credit because we didn't go out and do the research. Exactly, right? For sure. Okay. I think my deeper question still is oh, we're gonna get play we're gonna get arrested for plagiarism. Yes, we're gonna get arrested. <laughs> like that. To give to give your paper credibility. Aha. Uh -huh. Yes. That is a, probably the, the most ah, important reason. Break it up. We wanna give Katie's freezing. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> It says my internet connection is unstable. Let me try Where my did camera. Where Katie go? I don't know. She's here. Which Katie? Can you see me now? I'm stuck. There she is. Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> my uh, internet connection is not she, so... She sounds really far away. <laughs> she is terrible. <laughs> sorry, my internet connection is a little, little weird. Can you hear me now? No. No. It's okay. Okay, let me just check my internet connection here. Technology. I can hear you. Yeah, I can see every time your internet connection pops up, it's either red or yellow. Okay. All right, so how do I sound and look now? Can you guys hear me and see me okay? I can hear you. I can't. There you are. Okay. I can hear you, sort of. All right, sorry that it keeps going in and out. Um, so I think the person that had it was Katie. I think you said that referencing gives your work credibility. Oh, I said that was that. somebody else. Who was it? Jess. Justin. Nice, Jess. Yes, we need to, when we get to college level and we start writing scholarly papers, we have to give our work credibility and by doing that we go and find research that matches our work and like you said yes we want to give those authors also credit for the work they've done and the research they've done and therefore we we cite them and we reference them um more importantly it's to help us um 
write academically. And in order to write academically, we, we have to get away from using rhetoric, rhetoric in our paper. Do any of you know what rhetoric means or what rhetoric is? So rhetorical is, is the, the other word for it, rhetorical oh, speech. Repetitive. Mm, no. Okay, let me give you an example. Um, now I'm only using this example as an example. I'm not saying, I'm, I'm not taking any political views here. I'm just using it as an example. Okay. If you look at the way um, that someone like, uh, make sure my door's closed, <laughs> someone like uh, President Donald Trump talks, um, he, he kind of has a way of making statements, but he doesn't back it up with facts. Now, often the statements are correct or incorrect, um, depending on the facts, right? But if he said something and said, here is the evidence, or here's the research, or here is where I got this information, don't you think what he would be saying would be more credible? Because people often listen to some of the things he says and say, and say oh, well, he just made it up, or he, you know, he's just making stuff up, or he's just saying whatever. And so... Um, He's got no way of proving that what he is saying is correct unless he states the research. Where did he get that? So we call that rhetoric. When you just make a statement, a blanket statement, and um, you just want, you use very persuasive salesman type language, right? Very manipulative, you know, um, and there's no facts to back up what you are saying. Um, that's when you are using rhetoric. Now, politicians, unfortunately, use a lot of that, right? That, you know, um, I'm going to make America great again. Okay, well, good. We're happy that you're going to make America great again. Can you prove that with facts? So, um, like I said, guys, I'm not taking a political view at all. I'm just trying to show you what rhetoric looks like. Now, salesmen, you ever get these? I'm sure you know them. Smooth talking salesmen, they can sell you anything. Um, they can sell you bath soap that smells like bark, you know. They're just so persuasive in what they say and um, without any facts. And that is rhetoric. Um, sometimes you can have like lawyers, salesmen, particularly politicians, and even us. And if I'm trying to convince my child about something, let's say I'm trying to convince them that smoking is bad for them. You know, I'm like, you know what, son, smoking is bad for you. It's bad for your health. Um, you shouldn't do it because it's not good for you, you know. What I'm doing is I'm using persuasive language. But if I said to him, um, son, um, 50 million people across the globe die. And I'm just making this up, by the way. But let's say for all arguments sake, this was a fact. If I said to him, sweetheart, the reason I don't want you to smoke is because 50 million people die every year from cigarette smoke. That is why. Okay. The first statement was rhetoric. I'm just persuading. I'm trying to persuade him. The second one is I'm actually giving him some facts. And with the facts, he can then judge for himself, well, okay, is this a bad idea or not? Well, with 50 million people are dying, well, then it's, it's a pretty bad idea. But um, so do you see the difference? So that is why when we get to college, we have to, when we, we write papers, we have to get away from using rhetoric, broad blanket statements, opinions, suggestions, um, especially opinions. And whatever we say, we need to be able to back it up with research and evidence. And that is really the main reason why we have, we do referencing and citations. Does that make sense? So I, we have to get away from um, using this kind of talk in our papers and make our papers more academic, more formal, more scholarly. And that is what academic writing is. Academic writing is backed by facts or backed by peer review. We'll talk a little bit about that later on. Um, but it has been verified. It's information that's verified. So we're going to talk a little bit about um, the authority and the credibility of the sources that you are finding. Are they um, sources that are reliable? Because we can put in information into our papers and it can be, you can have references, you can have citations, but my question is how reliable are those sources? Because the, the sources have to have been checked by somebody. Right? Because anyone can just make a bunch of research and put it on, on the internet and say, oh, well, I did research about this, but has someone, excuse me, verified that? Okay. Any thoughts on what I've just said there? Does it make sense to you all? 
Do you have a better idea of what rhetoric is? Okay, good. It's very important. All right, good. I see a little thumbs up there, Cinnamon. Thank you. Okay. Um, let's go to let's go to our the actual research. So you each chose a topic. I think there was one person who handed in their paper. You wrote. You didn't outline for both the topics. Um, just have a look. Guys, just please have a, always look at your comments once I've graded your work because in there, um, I'll share with you some of the things that, that, that I found that maybe could be corrected or improved or that I really liked or I'll be like, wait, this is great, keep going on this track. You've chosen a topic, um, you're gonna stick with the one topic. Um, like I said, someone wrote on both topics, that's not necessary. Uh, we just wanna stick to one topic for this paper. Um, Cinnamon got, went in the head and did research already. Um, but cinnamon, you can either, like I said, you can use that or you can change it depending on what we can discuss this evening. And I've got some more things I want to talk to you about that are pretty important when it comes to research um, and citations and so on. Okay. So I just made a blanket statement and I said, um, the problem is the research needs to be verified. It needs to be reliable. So we need to make sure whoever put information on the internet or if it's ProQuest or wherever, that has been verified by somebody. Now, how can we make sure that the work is verified and the source and the information is reliable? How do I know? There's a few ways. Any ideas about that? Um, does, is the topic or the source that it was written on, how new is it? How old is it? Is it from 2010 or 1999? Right. <laughs> never were, been updated. Right. You were talking about time, the time frame of it. Yeah. Is the time frame recent or is it from 1975? Because if it's from 1975, as we, as we know, information is changing so fast. And we're learning so many new things that's going to be very outdated so yes date is very important how recent is that information and if it's something like a psych psychological topic 1975 may be okay but if it's a, a technological topic something to do with technology in 1975 the technology they had then compared to the technology we had today is worlds apart so it'll also depend on the subject but yes time frame is definitely one of the reasons one of the ways we can tell if information is reliable, but there is, there is better ways. That is one of them. Anything else that anyone might think would be a good way to verify if your source was reliable? If they have think, references the author is important or the source. I should go back to Katie said, if they have references themselves and they have, they have yes, they have um, quoted and cited Various authors, yes, definitely. Anything else? If they have a degree in what they're writing about. Oh, very important. Very, 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 very important. I don't think I want advice from someone on how to raise my children who has never had children before, right? There's no way, there's no way they can grasp. That would be Dr. Spock. It would be so dumb because they have no, they have no concept or under, there's no way someone who's never had a child can possibly understand what you're going through. And all of you guys have got kids and you know, man, it is, it changes your life forever. <laughs> um, so it's the same thing. If the person has a degree, they especially have, they have a doctorate degree, you know that they have done years and years and years of studying and research and the fact that they have been given a doctorate degree says that they are a master in this field, that what they say, they know what they're talking about. Well, they should anyway, right? That's what that says. If someone has a doctorate, it's saying they've been given a piece of paper that says um, they are uh, extremely knowledgeable in this area and we can rely on the things they say because they've done the research and they've done the work and they've put in a tremendous amount of time and effort into this particular subject. So yes, someone who has a degree for sure, and particularly doctors, doctorate group of you. That's a, that's a good one. Anything else?
Okay. Right. So I want to talk to you guys. Um, let me help you here. And you might want to write this down. All of that is, all of those are, are, are absolutely true. Now, when we are doing research, a lot of our research, guys, comes from Google searches or internet searches, um, even our searches on ProQuest and Shark and all of those. Now, what ProQuest and Shark, those um, libraries do is their collections of work and research that has been peer reviewed. Peer reviewed means that if I have a degree in psychology and I write a paper, I give my paper to my colleague who has a doctorate degree in psychology and ask them to go through it and verify my information. What they do is they then peer review it and they then add their name to that and say this is reliable. So it's more than one person. So peer reviewed, all the university and college libraries that you use like Shark and Progress contain work and articles and information that has been peer reviewed already. Someone else has verified it. So it's been double checked. So that should be correct and you should have no problem using that as referencing and citing, okay? So peer reviewing is very important uh, and universities do a lot of that. They make sure that they're always peer reviewing everything, all the articles, all the books, all the information, all the journals that come out, journals have been peer reviewed as well. Um, the problem when we do Google searches or internet searches is um, honestly anybody can buy a domain or create a web page um, with information on there on the internet. Uh, it's it's limitless, right? I mean, you know, some you pay for, some you don't. Everybody, anybody can put stuff on there. And how do I know? How do I know without a shadow of a doubt that what I'm reading is the truth? Is, is credible, is reliable, it's, it's a good source. And here it is. If your source says, and you use whatever the internet, the URL is, and it's dot .com. Dot .com. Dot .com stands for communal. Anybody, any Tom, Dick, and Harry can put and, and write stuff. And yes, some of it is very interesting. Some of it's very true. But if it's a dot .com, please do not use it in your professional writing. It has not been verified. So I want you to try and stay away from .com, okay? Does that make sense? Just because everyone can put stuff on there and it hasn't been, there's no control is what I'm saying. And people can write whatever. And I'm not saying everything that's .com is incorrect. I'm just saying it's very difficult to verify that. However, if you use information from a website or a web page that says .net at the end instead of .com, .net, .network is a little more controlled, okay? People typically have to pay to have websites on there or information on there. You have to have a domain. You have to have bought a domain. So often it's companies, okay? So when you do research, try to use, it's better to use .net URLs than .com. Even better than .NET. So .com, you kind of want to stay away from, but from .NET, these are good ones, .NET. The next one is um, .gov. Gov stands for government, right? So the government, now I'm not saying everything the government puts online, I'm not saying it's a pinch of salt, is correct. However, the stuff they typically put on their websites, like you think of all the coronavirus information, um, you know, all the um, information about um, health regulations and all sorts of information, that's all been verified, it's been checked. It's a department that has worked together to put information out there to the public that should be accurate. It should be trustworthy. We should be able to trust our government. I don't know if we can, I don't know if we should, but we're supposed to, uh, you know, but what I'm saying, <laughs> what I'm, I'm saying this very carefully, um, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but you know, I, I know that you know people can bend the truth. <laughs> um, Jessica's laughing at me. Um, I'm being very careful, I promise what I'm saying. But .gov, you can use that as credible information for your papers, credible source. It should be reliable, 
stuff they put out there online that's on .gov that's only for government officials and um, people that are obviously very educated in politics and so on. And so, yes, and I was going to get to the next one. Good one, Jessica. Jessica says, what about .org? .org stands for what? Let's look at the chat. Organization. 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 Right. An organization, once again, an organization needs to buy the domain, buy, pay for the website, and then what they do, their team puts information on there. So let's say, for instance, I'm an organization, we are a, what, pregnancy crisis organization, clinic, okay? And if I put information on my webpage that is incorrect, that is um, unverified, that is just a bunch of hogwash or junk or whatever, Nobody's going to trust that my organization is reliable. No one's going to come to our organization. What you put out there is very important as a business, okay? Using .gov, .org, um, very, very important. Businesses, if they put incorrect information out there, the public is going to have an outcry. Their business is going to be damaged. Their reputation is going to be damaged. So what they put out there, they've got to be, they, they've got to be sure it's correct. So people in businesses and organization use marketing companies marketing managers, their own internal marketing people to put stuff out there that is correct and that has been checked, that has been reviewed internally before it goes out to the public. And so what happens is if you're putting information out there that is a bunch of junk, um, people won't take you seriously, you will not have a business and very soon you won't have an organization. So businesses and organizations definitely try and put out stuff that is credible. So you can use definitely use .org, .net, .gov, and lastly, yes, well done, guys, .edu. What does edu stand for? Education. Right. If Guys, if we can't trust the education institutions to put verified or credible or reliable information online, who, who are we supposed to trust? So universities, colleges, you know, this, the stuff that they put online, um, that comes from their internal departments and organizations has been checked by teams, by marketing people. Um, it's been verified by professors and doctors. And so anything.edu is education is, is educational institutions and, and related to educational stuff. So that is good. So I would say to you, when you're doing Google searches and internet searches for your sources, use only.edu, .org, .gov, .net. Stay away from .com. It's not reliable, okay? And also, I'll get to you in a second, Cinnamon. Also, anything you find on ProQuest and Shark, and typically, ProQuest and Shark, those articles in there are not going to be .com. Very few of them. All right, Cinnamon, you had a question. Um, it's more like on that video that they would have you watch on the thing. It also says to stay away from blogs. Wick, Wicca, like Wikipedia, yeah, and yeah. yeah, the dot com. Yeah, if you want to, like with Wikipedia, if you're looking for a definition of something, rather use like a, a, a online dictionary, Mer Merriam-Webster dictionary, or some sort of dictionary, because Wikipedia, um, it's people putting stuff in there, and, and everyone and anybody can put information in there about anything. So it's the same as dot com. Um, you want to kind of stay away from that. You can rather. Yeah, go go to, use an online dictionary if you're looking for a definition for something. Um, so that's very interesting. Um, yeah, any anyone got anything to comment or say regarding all of that? Because I've given you quite a mouthful, but I think it's getting you thinking, right? That um, what I'm putting down. Remember, guys, you're putting your name on that paper. You're giving it to a professor to read, or even a classmate to read, and from now on. You, are, you know, once you've received your certificate and your diploma, you need to be able to write in such a way that is, um, like I said, scholarly, that is credible, and where people can trust what you say. So if you're putting your name to something that you write, make sure you have done the research and that your research is verified. Um, because now you're no longer just someone who's graduated from high school. You're gonna be someone who's graduated from college. So people expect you to be on a different level when it comes to your writing and reliability and credibility. People, you need to be credible yourself and stuff you put out there needs to be credible. Um, yes, Cinnamon said about blogs. Blogs are you know, pages people create. 
but they have conversations. They talk about, you know, all sorts of different things, whether it's gardening or whether it's, you know, hiking or all sorts of things. And it's, it's generally, it hasn't been verified. Um, it's not to say it's all incorrect because some people, there are some people that blog who are masters in their fields of, of knowledge. Um, but yeah, it's typically not a really good source. Now, here's the fun part. We don't, for, for sources and for this paper, we don't have to stick with internet searches, ProQuest and Shark. Remember, that is one part of research. You can use books, okay? You can use video clips. I had um, someone using video clips for my last, one of his papers for last mod, and he did such a great job. As long as you cite where you got it from. You can use newspapers, you can use magazines, you can use articles, journals. Um, it's just, oh, excuse me, so many different sources you can use. It doesn't have to be, it can be TV program, a TV documentary. It can be a, a movie from a movie, as long as you cite it correctly and you, you reference it correctly. So I want you to try, when you're writing your paper for this mod, try to use a different form of sources than just internet searches. I don't want to see .com, and I'd like to see different things, maybe a book reference or a movie clip or a documentary. Be creative in what you do. Um, remember, this is your work. and something to be proud of. So. Um, if I get a paper and, my, and I look at the student and they have referenced a video clip or they've referenced something else besides .com, I get excited because I'm like, wow, they've put in some effort here and, um, and they've, they've tried to be creative with their resources um, and their sources. So be creative. What I'm saying, be creative. Okay. Very good. That's been a whole mouthful. Now, the question is, do you all know how to use Word to reference and cite your sources? You do, Sienna. Jessica, do you know how to do it? I learned it in my first class. Oh, good. Okay. Cinnamon. That, I learned. I don't really remember how to use Word, but I know how to do it a different way. Okay. Now, typically, they say do not use Word, but I'm saying to you, please use Word to create your reference page. One of the things was in our poll, someone said, I don't know how to create a reference page. Create the reference page and create the citations using Word because it will be 90% correct, 99% correct. Jessica, what are you doing? <laughs> oh, you look funny. <laughs> Here's the deal. <laughs> I, I've used the references in Word and, and it's got this whole system where like the citations, the in-text citations are a part of the references where it like tries to fill them in for you and yeah. it messes them up. Like it's just got poor formatting. I think sometimes, sometimes it's just not quite right. So I've just kind of like, I used that purple book for the first six months, like it was a Bible and then I quit using it cause I had it memorized. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, it shouldn't mess things up. Um, the way that I use Word doesn't typically mess it up. It's you've got to learn how to delete and paste, copy it over the references that you want to use. So because what it does is it stores all of the references you've used. And then you need to copy and paste them over so it creates a reference page with just those. So guys, let me look at that real quick. I'm going to share my screen. Um, I'm going to open a Word document. And just very quickly look at that for those of you that, that are still unsure how to do that. So once you've got a Word document, let's say we've got to type a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, okay. Blah, 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 blah. And now I want to put in a citation. Okay. I go here to references on Word. Click on references. Now, I feel the first thing I've got to do is check. APA style that I've selected APA style. So maybe Jess, maybe that's what's happening there. The second thing I'm going to do is I want to insert a reference here. Sorry, a citation right here. So where I put my cursor where I want the citation. Okay. Yes. You're freezing. Sorry. You're freezing terribly. Terribly. Yeah, I've missed most of what you said. Okay. Me too. I think everybody did. 
<laughs> Gotta wait for your computer to catch up to you, Katie. I'm trying to go right. too fast. <laughs> Not going so hot. Let me manage participants. If I Let me try and mute everyone. Oh yeah. Okay, if I unmute, if I mute everyone, is that a little better? No? Let's check the internet real quick. Oh guys, I'm so sorry. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not. Like right now you're fine. Okay. Yeah, well, just like you guys did, like you did, just stop me as soon as it's like not bad and let's just give it a moment to, to kind of reconfigure. What I was saying is, um, so do you, is this the references you guys use when you, when you do your Word document? You type the information and then go here to references and say insert citation. Is that how you guys do it? Cinnamon says yes. Okay. Um, so... Once you insert a citation, so I click on insert citation and I say add a new source. And I'm going to say, okay, it's a website. My author is, it's a Katie Wilkinson for, for all the sake, whatever. Web page, the website, just doing it really quickly, the year. <laughs> 19, oh, it's the year. What other line? month gosh and let's say okay i'm using dot com let me go use dot org at least <laughs> okay i click okay and it adds a citation is do you see that it adds it incorrectly and then at the end of the sentence i've got to put the period right so i put the period after the citation what it does is it automatically stores that citation. So let's say I, I, I write something else and I do it, I have to put another citation. And let's say this time I'm going to add a new source, I'm gonna do a book for instance. So I go here and I say book selection, the author was, Cinnamon. the title was today, uh, book title. It's just, you don't, know, you don't have to fill everything in, just the stuff that's most important. I'm just making up stuff, guys. Publisher, who should we say? Same age. Okay. Do you see how it automatically puts it in there? Now, what it's done, it's, it's saved both of these citations. So if I click on manage sources, as you can see, it brings up my master list of sources that I've used, the current ones I'm using, and I can copy and delete. So let's say I don't want to use this one. I can delete that. Or I want to copy this one over. Let's go placeholder one. Let's see if it'll copy over. See, I can copy it over to my current list or delete. So it'll keep, it'll save all the references you've ever used. And then on this side, it'll, you know, you can, for, what, for whichever ones you want to use for this paper only, you put on the current list side. Does that make sense? Now to do my reference page, as you guys know, your reference page needs to go on a, pay, a separate page, right? And yeah, we know that for APA style, separate page. So now I want to create my reference page. All I then simply do, it's already stored the references that I've used. I go to bibliography. I choose, or well, we use references. We don't say bibliography, we say references. So I just use references. And voila, it created a references page for me. Okay, this ND was a placeholder, but there's the two that I used. Do you need me to do that again? Does it make sense? Okay, very good. As long as we're using that, I think it's, it's a good cinnamon. It's, it's as accurate as possible as it can be. Um, and uh, it's a good way to use it if you don't know how to do referencing and, and citations. What's that, Sienna? Can't hear you. 
Okay, sorry. You said you were bad. At All right, I'm going to stop share. I think the stop share also, and let me stop my video. Um, can you hear me even though my video is off? No. Yeah, it always says your bandwidth is low. Yeah, you know what? I think on Thursday I'll I'll go to the campus and do this from campus. Okay, guys, I'm sorry. Can you hear me now? All right, very good. Okay, so that's basically all I wanted to talk about with sources and referencing and whatnot and just help us understand a little bit more about why this is extremely important in our work. Um, I am going to go to this week's discussion. Let me just go find it. And what I can do is just close some of these. Um, I'm going to this week's discussion. I'm having a look at, I'm going to modules. And I want to look at the discussion real quick. You have to do can't search. hear you again. We can't oh. hear you. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Okay. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me at all? Okay. Okay. Um, I was just I was just uh, talking about this week's discussion. <laughs> Guys are laughing at me. I'm sorry. Let me. I just need to minimize this page. We're laughing with you. I heard you laughing. Yeah. Okay, this week's discussion, let's see, you have to, let me go to the prompt. The prompt says, um, in your initial post, share at least two truths and one lie with your peers. These can be on any topic. You do not have to be, per do not have to be personal. Back up your truth with a lie and evidence found using the research techniques from the background. You're a robot again. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. It's not your fault. All right. Okay. Can you hear me? Corona. <laughs> <laughs> Can you guys hear me now? Can you hear me? Okay. Um, I'll go to the campus on Thursday and do my lecture from there so that this doesn't happen again because I think it's my internet at home. Um, your discussion for this week is a lot of fun. You have, we're playing two truths and a lie, okay? So you have to give two statements that are true and one lie. For the two statements that are true, you have to find research. For the lie, you have to fabricate or make up your own research and we have to decide when we reply and we respond to you, we have to decide um, which of your statements is the lie and why we think that. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, good, because that's a lot of fun. So in our replies, do not give the answer. Do not give the answer in your initial post. What you have to do is have two truths and one lie. Everything must be evidence-based. But what the lie obviously has, is evidence you've made up, okay? But you've got to make it look real. And then for the replies, we will read your two truths and lie and, and try to, to discover or um, figure out which one is the lie, okay? So that's going to be a lot of fun. So that will be our discussion. Huh? I only did research. I have a question. All right, hold on. Let Sienna go first. Sienna, you go first. I only did research for one of them, not all three. Should I retype it or? I think you can edit it. Okay. You should be able to edit it. What I would do is find research for the second one and the third one, make it up. Yeah. Go ahead, Jessica. Um, I have a quick question about the research. So if we fabricate research, um, 
wouldn't it just be easy to double check each person's research and find the fake research? Well, if you want, I mean, if, that seems like a simple. If if you if the person wants to go through all that trouble, they can do that, sure. Um, but it's kind of more fun guessing, you know. So wh whatever works for whoever, I don't mind. Um, but yeah, obviously you can go back and look at their research and, and determine which is which is the truth and which is the lie, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. Okay. That is the discussion. Are we cool on the discussion? I'm just logging in. I want to see if I can log in and have a look at the. Um, yes. Okay. Katie. Yes. Um, Sian whenever I post mine, Sienna can't answer it. So she has to answer everybody else's. Is that okay? That's okay. Yeah. I don't know if she knows all about anybody's post. Say that again. Oh, I, I, I forgot that it's because I'm on a different thread. Could, will you share everybody's yes. on the my what, thread? Yeah. So what I did with last week, Jessica, was I shared everybody's and then you replied to me and I just, I copied that and shared that with them so that they could see it. But yeah, you, you um, will. Did you see my second reply? Because I, I had a hard time replying to anybody else's posts because you had um, copied and pasted them. They didn't have the correct reply format okay so what you could do is then just I had a reply. yeah just reply to me and reply to me twice and then just say hey sienna or hey okay. whoever and i'll copy that and post it in their in their shell okay okay i know it's very frustrating when you are when your credits the credits of your class are different to theirs it was just the timing of when you started and when they started yeah. And I uh, know it's just something they haven't been able to sync yet. And uh, it's very frustrating, unfortunately. I'm so sorry. Um, I know they're working on it. <laughs> That's okay. So okay. taking a look. Make it work. This yeah. Way. Okay. Yeah. I'll just copy and paste over. And even if you have to reply twice to me, but just put the person's name in who you're replying to and I'll just make sure they get that. Okay. Um, Thank you. Looking at... Why does this not want to let me minimize this page? It won't let me. Oh, here we go. So for your assessment, um, as you know, you, you go into course media, read through all the course media for week two, and that'll give you the information for your assessment. For your assignment, now you're going to find the sources for your paper, right? Um, Accuracy, relevancy, authority, accuracy, purpose. Okay, we've talked about most of that. For your assignment, now that you have done the outline and you've got an idea of what you're going to be writing about, the next step in your paper is to find the sources, to find the references and citations. Um, it's better to do it this way around because when you start doing the research, you are reading and absorbing more information about the topic. And then when it comes time to actually write the paper, you've got more to write about. So some of you, if you're struggling to have enough content and enough information to write your paper, go back and read some more of your sources. Go find more sources, go read more information, get some more information into your head about the topic so you will have more to write. If you're struggling to summarize, like I said, use keywords, write them out, and then make sentences. If you're struggling to paraphrase, same thing. Take the key key words or main points out of it, um, make a list and then put those into sentences in your own words and then that's a paraphrase or a summary. Um, so there are ways to do that easier than what you have been doing. So basically for this uh, week, I'm gonna be looking at your sources and evaluating the credibility using the method that they are showing you in the actual assignment question. Um, so I'm gonna be looking at the quality of your source, the accuracy of it, the timeline, the purpose, um, a lot of different things, and that's where your grade is coming from. I think what they want you to do, if I remember correctly, is um, 
we're going to discuss the accuracy, relevancy, authority, currency, and purpose of each of your sources. So once you've chosen your sources and you've got the information, and uh, you're going to get two, then under each you're going to list your source, and then you're going to discuss those things regarding your source, the purpose, the accuracy, uh, the authority, uh, and the timeline. You're going to talk about it and say uh, you are going to um, discuss how credible your own source is, how, how relevant it is um, using those, those points. Now, remember, guys, your assignment is 90 points. So you've got to hand in something substantial. So make sure you've got a cover page. Make sure you're using APA format. Give me an introduction. Give me a conclusion. Have a reference page. And then as your, your, your body or the main part of your assignment, discuss your sources. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, good. Um, the assessment, are we all clear on where to go to find all our um, information for the assessment? in course media for week two? Yeah. Okay, very good. Wait, what the, the oh, quest, I can only take it uh, once. I can't take it anymore. All right, uh, just hang on, I Cinnamon. Can't, can't. Jessica, <laughs> sorry, can you repeat the question, Jessica? Sorry, sorry, there's so much of a lag, I didn't realize we were talking at the same time. <laughs> Um, I, I don't have ProQuest anymore, EBSCO. I, I won't be able to use those resources. Is that okay? It's in your shell. It's um, in I know. It hasn't worked for like a year. Is it, it because, in the beginning, but... Is it, uh, is it because of your passwords or why is it not working? Yeah. It's, it hasn't worked for a very long time. Um, I think it's password related. Uh, I, I just haven't used those resources in forever. Probably okay. since like my first two mods, honestly. Yeah. So the way to sort out the password is to call the help desk, the IT help desk, so they can help you sort out the password. I'm okay that you don't use it as long as you don't use .com and you use other sources. So okay. is that okay? I can do that. Very good. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah. All right. Um, sorry, uh, Cinnamon. What was your question? I think she may have frozen as well. Looks like we... I'm just unmuting and muting myself to see if that doesn't help at all. Cinnamon, you had a question, dear. The quiz, um, I took it just, I had watched the videos and everything and then I took it, but I guess I misunderstood a lot of the questions. So I'm going to retake it, but it won't let you. It won't let you? Okay. I'll go in there and make sure that you can do it. You can take it. So give me about 10 minutes just to go in there and reconfigure it to make sure you can take it more than once. Okay. And I'll open it for a longer period of time as well. So I'll do it with all of them. All right, guys, with that, I think I'm just going to take a little break, stop here, so I can go and do that for Cinnamon, and you guys can take a break. We're on the hour, and then we'll come back in about 10 minutes and reconvene, and then we'll finish up. And, um, yeah, I won't keep you guys too long unless uh, you want to sit and work with me. That's fine, but I know that you are with your families, and it's very difficult to spend two or three hours online. So let's take a 10-minute break, and we'll get back, and we'll continue.
Um, that was really all I wanted to talk to you about was, you know, just the credibility of your sources, what, what is credible, what isn't, um, what you can use, what you shouldn't use. Um, and then uh, having a look at how you do it in Word, making sure you guys know how to do that. Um, and so uh, we will do our next in-class activity on Thursday. Um, but furthermore, that's really all that I do have for this evening for the lecture part of it. If you would like to stay on and um, work on your assignments, uh, I'm going to be sitting here doing schoolwork. So I'll sit with you and uh, you can stay with me. If you have to be with your family, that's okay as well. Like I said, I understand you guys have all got children um, and you want to continue working on your own at another time. That is fine as well. I am here. If you need anything from me, just, just ask, just shout. They shoot me an email. And uh, thank you for those of you that have been shooting me emails with questions. Um, I'm try I try to get to them as quickly as possible. Um, so I'm right here, guys. And whatever you need to do is fine with me. Um, enjoy the evening. Yes, Tiana. Um, so I've been, I, it's been like five minutes, but it's not pulling up any of the videos for week two either, just like week one. It's not pulling up any of the videos. Because uh, in week one, it didn't pull up any of the videos. Like I see that too. And now none of these are loading. All right, I'm going to go and have a look at that. It's I'm just not, not it's just not loading. Like it's not showing a video. It shows all the words and everything, but yeah. it's not showing the video. But sometimes I know. Are you able to find all the videos, like in YouTube separately? Just say that again. Um, I was able to find all the videos last week separately in YouTube, but um, like separately, uh, I found like ones that match the same title and match the same time and assumed they were the same, the same okay. author and stuff like that right so okay so you just went was, to youtube and made it would work. okay yeah uh, it wouldn't work through canvas yeah i don't know why they're not loading up i'll have a look at that and then I'll, I'll send a notice to the we call it a ticket system that we have when there's an issue with a shell or with videos and then they'll look at that so i can just say i'll send up a ticket and let them know this problem with the videos aren't loading yeah. Um, for me, I had to click right on the center of the screen and then it didn't play and then it played with sound only and no picture. And then I refreshed the page and then it played, but it took forever for it to do anything. So Okay, because that's what I have seen when I've gone okay. in there. It's just taken a very long time to load and I don't know why. And I think it's, you know, just because everyone's on the internet and um, yeah. So there's a couple of ways, you guys. It sounds like you can you can try and do those, um, either re, uh, finding them on YouTube or then refreshing your screen, like Cinnamon said, and maybe clicking in the middle of the screen. Um, but like I said, I'll send up a ticket to corporate so that they know there's an issue with those, and hopefully by next week it'll be fixed, so we don't have to worry about week three and you guys can just get in there and see them. Okay. All right, guys. Well, enjoy the evening. I'll stay here and I'll check in with you every so often. Uh, good to see you guys. You all look good. And um, gosh, can't wait for campus to get back to normal. I was there earlier today. It was like a ghost town. Nobody there. <laughs> um, but it sure is good to see you all. And um, I look forward to just being able to be on campus soon. Gosh. Anyway, so this is week two. Yes. Thank you. All right, Thank guys. you. I'm probably going to have to go. My kids won't go to sleep. That's okay, Katie. No worries. You go and take care of your kiddos. All right. Thank you. All right. Bye, guys. Have a good one. Bye, guys. Bye, Katie. I'm going to be on here because I may have more questions. So, but I'm going to be right here. Yeah, if you have a question, just unmute your microphone and start talking. So I'm just I'm just muting mine so that all my noise here doesn't irritate you as I'm typing and working.
Um, guys, I have reopened week three. Two, three, and four is assessment, so you guys can take them more than once. You have three attempts for each, okay? <laughs> I love the thumbs up, Cinnamon. Thanks. <laughs> You're so funny, girl.
And out of our three test scores, you're going to keep the highest one, right? Yeah, the computer will automatically save the highest one.
Each time I took the test, it went up. It was like, it was 50 or 42 out of 70 the first time, 53 out of 70 the second time, and then 60 out of 70 the third time. Nice. Okay. Well, it made a nice jump there for you. Good stuff. Here in Fort Collins, I don't know if um, you in Fort Collins, Katie. Yeah. Okay. So, do you do the howl at eight o'clock? <laughs> Since you're on here, I'm going to go. No, but I hear it every yes. I've been listening to it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Echo loves it. She's out Echo there with Daddy it. doing it right now. So, so what is it? Just for entertainment, or it's why are we doing it? Apparently, like a howl. I think it was until it's like. There, everybody's mad that Colorado is on lockdown. So until everybody's allowed out, they're gonna howl or something like that. Cool. Okay, I love it. <laughs> I think some of the people. Oh, it's supposed to be support for the first responders. Yeah, oh, it's a yeah. food. It's a it's a support. Oh, that's pretty cool. It's just. Uh, I think it's just to let everybody know that we're still alive. <laughs> we yeah. Please let us know when we can leave. Yeah. I think it's um, all of it. It's just something fun. And then after you're all done at about two or three minutes after fireworks go off. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say most of the reason people do it is because everybody else is doing it and it gives them a reason to be obnoxious. Yeah. Yeah. That's probably true. That's true, yeah. Okay, so I'm done with the discussion post. Yeah. The only question that I have, which is a, um, working on the other one, the um assignment is so where it says name what do we put there because it's like do we put the citation because i know the citation goes it says source evaluation evaluation assignment worksheet name yes. yeah so do we put our name there is it at the top or yeah, it says so at the top of the page. I'll look. Sure. So this page right here, and then it'll say name, and then it'll say source evaluation assignment worksheet. Okay. We yeah, I guess your name. That's what I was thinking. Okay. Mm, yeah. Okie dokie. All right, and then we give the. It says currency, so we provide the rating. Where do we find the rating at? Because I guess I must have missed that somewhere. You you have to rate it. So in uh, other words, look at, look at the dates, see how current it is, and if it's very current, give them a good score, and if it's not, then give it a lower score. Okay, so five is the best score, and zero would be the worst. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Cool. That's, that's so confusing. I know. Ugh.
So for the assignment, we're just supposed to pick a source and pretty much just evaluate it and fill out this? Yes. So you can fill out the form and use that form, guys. Um, but just remember that it, it is an assignment. So um, that's just to help you evaluate your sources. You can use that form, but please include an introduction and a conclusion, a reference page, a cover page, like an assignment because it's worth 90, 90 points. So um, you've got to give me more than just that. Um, so put it into an assignment type format. Does that make sense? Um, no. <laughs> you, so the, the worksheet. That would be, that I've ever gotten an assignment where we don't do just what it says. You want a cover page? I'm so confused. So the worksheet is to help you evaluate the sources, right? Using those different um, aspects, like the currency, whatever. So what I need you to do is then to take all of that. You can you can submit that. Um, but what I really want is just put it into an assignment type format. So you can use that in the, as your content. But give me like a little introduction. Give me a little conclusion. You can even you on that page. Do it on that page. Do you do a cover page like you normally would for any assignment? Um, and a reference page because remember it's worth ninety points. So I have to have some, something enough stuff, you know, to be able to um, give you ninety points. Sorry, my phone's just ringing. I'm just gonna take this call. It might looks like it could be a student. Sorry, marketing call. <laughs> so what I'm saying, so the actual, huh? So the actual assignment itself is pretty much just making our first draft of the paper. No, the the actual assignment. So the worksheet that they've given you um, helps you to evaluate your sources, right? That's what the assignment is about. But what I'm saying is take that then um, and put that as the content of your assignment. But because it is an assignment, you want to add a little introduction. You want to add a little, little conclusion for this particular assignment. Um, your reference page, your cover page. Um, just because this is worth 90 points. And so, you know, I need um, kind of all of that in there to be able to give you the full grade. So if you just submit the worksheet, you okay. won't, yeah, you won't get like, you won't get grades for like APA style formatting and all of that. You'll just get grades for what you submit. So yeah, if you submit it in a, an assignment format, you're going to get a better grade is what I'm saying. Okay, what should be on our cover page then? Like a normal assignment where you just put, you know, um, your na your name, assignment week two, the name, the title of the assignment, and the date. You've done cover pages for assignments before, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, no. Yeah. No. no. Mm -mm. Usually, we just click on the assignment, and all the other ones. You click on the assignment. It's either there. We, it tells us what we're supposed to do. We do that and then we turn it in. Right. So but what I'm saying to you is because it's such. That's why I was confused. So. Okay. So yeah, that is all part the cover page and all of this part of your AP, is part of APA style or institutional writing guidelines. And so that's just kind of, we're just starting to prepare our, our paper for the final draft. If you don't include all of that, you don't have to. If you don't include all of that, you'll only get grades for what you do hand in and submit. But if you look at the rubric, I have to give you some grades for um, formatting and for your um, APA writing style or institutional writing guidelines. Mm -hmm. So those grades will come from that. So if you don't do that, you'll lose those grades, but you'll still you know, get the grade for the paper. But what I'm saying, if you wanna get a really good grade, um, just add those final touches to your assignment. So it's like a, it is like a full assignment and uh, I can give you a really good grade. Okay. I got really confused for a minute, but I got it.
I have a question. On the uh, Microsoft, when you're doing your reference, I'm citing a book, but um, hold on, I can't get out of this. What's the difference between book and book section? You are muted. <laughs> Certain books like encyclopedias and things have sections and are sectional. And it, it's it's for that kind of book. So if your book, if it, it's not an encyclopedia or anything like that, just go, just say book. Don't do book section.
All right, I'm gonna get off. You're still muted. Okay, so thanks for the reminder. All right, guys, I think I'm gonna get off here as well. Um, I'm just about done with everything uh, that I need to do for today. I will see you guys on Thursday. And uh, yeah, just let me know if there's anything that you need. I've seen the, uh, a couple of assignments come in. And Sienna, I saw your assignment from last week. So thank you very much. I will try and get to that tomorrow morning. Um, yeah, guys, have a great evening. Have a great day tomorrow. And I'll see you on Thursday. And stay safe, okay? okay. Bye. Bye, everyone. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Bye.